dir was äh, aufnehmen können, Manfred, aber auch äh, nur zeitweise. This is a TK-11 microphone test. Viking 1996, hello radar contact. Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Paul and I'm at the radio call sign is Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango. Having a quad band portable radio has always been my dream. Going to the mountains or somewhere else on a trip and taking only a small handheld radio with me is certainly what most radio amateurs wish for. Finally, Quancheng as the first manufacturer came up with the concept of a quad band portable handheld radio which includes three VHF and UHF bands such as 6 meter band, 2 meter band and 70 centimeter band and also one HF band which is 10 meter band. But we could also add the CB band and also 12 meter band to this. So theoretically we can talk about a 5 band radio or even a 6 band radio if we also include the frequencies of the 12 meter band which is just below 25 megahertz, of course at the expense of lower power and worse parameters at harmonic frequencies. There are currently three versions of the Guangsheng TK11 on the market. It is the TK11, TK11.5 and TK11.8. Basically, except for the larger battery capacity of the TK11.8, which is 3000 mAh, instead of 2600 mAh in case of the TK11 and TK11.5 and slightly different front panel design, every else in all versions is identical, including the electronics inside. A tri-band antenna is also included as standard in the package, which is in addition to the classic 2 meter and 70 centimeter band also offers the possibility of transmitting on 6 meter band as you can see a coil on the end of the antenna which is of course missing on the previous UVK5 antenna which is only dual band antenna. Unfortunately when it comes to transmitting on these bands it is still only FM modulation. It is still not possible to transmit in SSB. And I believe that soon there will be some smart programmer who will create a so-called custom firmware for TK11, which will allow us to transmit at least in emulated DSB modulation similar to what the IJV did with the Quancheng UVK5. The Quancheng TK11 has a built-in full-band all-mount receiver, which allows you to receive the AM and SSB signals at frequencies from 153 kHz to 1160 MHz. The FM demodulation works from 18 MHz up to 1160 MHz. The SATCOM frequencies and also area around 800 MHz is also included in this receiver. This advantage is that strictly given secondary antenna connector used for frequencies from 153 kHz up to 18 MHz. So also for the 20 meter band, the secondary antenna socket is used for 3.5 mm jack connector and it is not possible to switch it to the main SMA antenna connector. I hope that this will be solved later in the software. I do not consider the 3.5 mm jack connector to be a happy solution for connecting the antenna. However, the reason why they put the 3.5 mm jack socket here is to use the already supplied T-shaped ferrite antenna which you will use mainly in long waves and middle wave bands to receive AM stations. Frequency range of the ferrite antenna is 153 kHz up to 18 MHz. For transmitting on HF bands 
such as a 12 meter CB band and 10 meter, we need to buy our own antenna, preferably this telescopic whip antenna, which we can tune or fine tune by inserting or extending the individual elements into each other and thus changing the resonant length of the antenna in the range of 24. 0.7 MHz up to 29 MHz. Of course, I always recommend using a counterpoise tuned in this way to increase the efficiency of the vertical antenna. The length of the counterpoise should be a quarter of the wavelength of the band on which we want to transmit. You can find the link to this antenna in the video description. In case you are using this uh, vertical antenna or actually any other shortwave antenna with your TK11, you have to count with the one fact that this radio doesn't have the built-in SWR meter. So you may probably use the VNA and pre-measure uh, pre the antenna for its best SWR and then attach the antenna to your radio to don't damage the finals in your radio. The other option is to use the tiny SWR meter. For example, like this one. I have the link down in the video description if you are interested also in this very tiny SWR shortwave meter. As you can see, I have used two adapters. One is PL259 to SMA and also 259 to the BNC because I'm using the BNC connector on the WIP antenna. So when the antenna is not uh, properly tuned and you push the PTT button you will be warned that the SWR is pretty high. It's, it's higher than SWR3 and you shouldn't transmit in such an antenna and therefore you have to play with the length of the antenna and get the best SWR as you can. So if you go lower or here on this line actually you are getting better and better SWR. Ideally you should work with 1.0 of course but I think it's not going to happen. Okay, so that's the mini SWR meter, maybe for your next needs. The frequency, modulation, channel name or signal meter are displayed on this monochrome display, which is identical to the display in the Quancheng UVK5 with a blue backlight. I consider this an advantage because the display is very readable even in the direct sunlight, which unfortunately cannot be said about the color displays. And this is the speaker comparison between the UVK5 and the TK11. Both radios are using the same speaker module inside, but the TK11 has slightly larger case and it may change the sound of this radio a little bit. So let me show you how both radios sound like. Yeah. <laughs> 
unikátna rozhľadňa v tvare nábojnice a údolie smrti sa ako memento na ťažkej boje karpatsko-dukrianskej operácie a veľké straty na životoch dukrianských hrdinov nachádza pred obcov Kružlová v okrese Svidník. CQ test, this is Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango, this is the speaker test of the Guangsheng UVK-5. Speaker test, Guangsheng UVK-5, over. CQ test, this is Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango, this is the speaker test of the Guangsheng TK-11. Speaker test of the Guangsheng TK-11, over. On the contrary, the modulation during FM transmission seems quieter to me compared to the older UVK5. Even though I used identical settings like wide bandwidth and maximum microphone gain, here is a comparison. CQ test, CQ test. This is a TK11 microphone test. TK11 microphone test. CQ test, CQ test, this is the UVK5 microphone test, UVK5 microphone test. This is the TK11 microphone test, TK11 microphone test. This is the UVK5 microphone test, UVK5 microphone test, over. The overall design of the TK11 is of much better quality. And on the side of the radio has two independent PTT buttons and also two side buttons that can be programmed for different functions. The upper PTT is for VFOA and the lower one is for VFOB. On top of the radio we can see the volume knob, the main socket for the antenna and also secondary socket for secondary antenna, especially for the T-shape antenna, which is protected by the rubber. And here is the LED lamp, which is also protected by the screen protector. Uh, thank God that manufacturer has kept the standard Kenwood type port for connecting accessories, such as an external microphone or headphones. And therefore, all the accessories that I use with my UVK5 can also be used with the TK11. There is also a USB-C port on the back of the battery for a standard 5V USB-C charger. The package, of course, also includes a charging dock where the power cable is no longer permanently attached as it was in the UVK5, but takes the form of an external switching power supply which is 12 volt and 1 amp with a jack connector. Let's finally listen to how this radio receives signals on HF, VHF and UHF frequencies.
Uzyskałam dobry nastrój. Neberit B kompleks. Odzyskaj balans. Veramente fantastico la condizione per per la Spagna per la Ucraina. A a ricertite, grazie. I hope that this video helped you to create opinion on the Kuangsheng TK11 and maybe it convinced you to buy one. Of course, you can find the links to buy the radio down in the video description. So, I would be very happy if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and 73.